I'm sure that you heard about respirations previously, but in academic area, when students of English version in class 9 and 10 level, and in O level also, you need to know a little bit more about it. And of course, those students of uh, A levels are even studying an HSC level, they definitely uh, need to know a more detail about the respirations. Today, in this video, I shall be discussing a primary level respiration lectures and then in HSC level, I shall be definitely uploading a series of videos on respirations. As this video is only designed for the SSC level or O level students, I hope that uh, they definitely will follow the things which is written on the book and of course they must maintain a syllabus. So that is why there are some limitations of explaining things that till which level I should go. So firstly, frankly speaking, that this is a huge, this is definitely a huge. But to make you understand very simply, I can say that, that in the previous videos you of course studied about photosynthesis and you know that by the process of photosynthesis plants and leaves and chlorophylls actually they can absorb the solar energy and then transfer it into the kinetic energy inside which is it's not about the chemical energy and that that energy requires by us because we the animals we don't have chlorophylls or any capabilities to use the sunlight because sun is the power of all energies here so when sunlight falls down into the leaf then leaf produce carbohydrate and that carbohydrate is the respiratory substance here so that carbohydrate C6H12O6 this carbohydrate will be oxidized will be oxidized and that oxygen is required for respiration without oxygen respiration can happen but i will definitely explain in case of aerobic and anaerobic respirations so this oxygen is required and of course there are series of enzymes there are series of enzymes is also required for this process so this is glucose which will be oxidized and will produce carbon dioxide and water and also also the required most important thing is that it will produce ATP which is adenosine triphosphate you must know the abbreviation of ATP which is adenosine adenosine tri triphosphate you know it already and it's called the biological coin you know it already that ATP is called the energy energy coin why ATP is called energy coin I also explained it because the, all this energy that's stored as a unit of ATP and then ATP can produce and can reverse this energy when it's required that is why ATP is called the energy coin but here what's going on this one molecule of glucose will be oxidized by six molecule of oxygen and it will produce six molecule of carbon dioxide and six molecule of water but the thing is if this glucose is oxidized fully from the environmental oxygen then it will produce more energy that is 38 ATP usually and that is a big question how this 38 ATP is producing I will definitely upload a video how this 38 ATP is producing through this aerobic respiration but you know that when this glucose is fully oxidized then 38 amount of ATP 38 molecule of ATP will be produced which is equivalent to more or less 686 kilocalorie so it is actually 686 kilocalorie per mole and of course you know about mole from your study on chemistry so 686 kilocalorie amount of energy is produced by oxidizing one molecule of glucose so as higher animals those animals have multicellular organisms like us like human body we have 
billions and trillions of cells in our body so for the dynamic process like locomotions like metabolisms like uh, healing of the body growth of the body all the process require energy and that energy is produced through this process but if if this glucose is not oxidized and if it is partially oxidized then this ATP will not be producing at that level this would be like two ATP two molecular of, of ATP and of course if this glucose is not fully oxidized these compounds will be changed there will be like ethanoic acids I mean ethanol or lactic acids so right now we can say that respiration respiration okay respiration is a process where is a, is a process is a physiological process where is a biological process where a glucose will be oxidized or the respiratory substance will be oxidized to produce energy and as a byproduct it will produce carbon dioxide so it's going on in all living organisms in every moment so this is very important so respiration we can divide it into two parts in two different types so number one is aerobic aerobic respiration and aerobic respiration respiration and in, you can say in a different way that okay you can say in a different way so that i think i need to wear more so here we say that respiration respiration can be in these two process like aerobic aerobic respiration and anaerobic respiration so what are the difference in these two types of respiration aerobic means where fully oxygen is required from the environment fully so that when a respiratory substance like glucose will be oxidized then more i mean large amount of energy will be uh, evolved like 30 38 38 atp is required so in case of aerobic respiration we must know one thing that the materials the respiratory materials will fully fully oxidized this is important and 38 atp will be produced so if the question is what is aerobic respiration is that aerobic respiration is that type of respirations where the respiratory materials like glucose will fully oxidized by the environment from the, the oxygen from the environment and it will produce carbon dioxide water and the large amount of ATP like 38 ATP this is called aerobic respiration but in case of anaerobic respiration what's going on in case of anaerobic respirations I mean the, uh, the uh, requirement of oxygen is zero I mean environmental oxygens are not there but but in anaerobic respiration a little amount of energy will be produced uh, which is 2 ATP this is very important so 2 ATP will be produced from one molecule of glucose but in this case in aerobic respirations from one molecule of glucose 38 ATP will be produced so in aerobic respirations where 2 ATP is produced it's definitely partially oxidized so we need to say that this is partially oxidized so this is fully oxidized and hence it is producing 38 ATP and this is partially oxidized and hence it is producing it's producing acetic acid uh, no, lactic acid or acid uh, or ethanol actually I can say that ethanol so ethanol or acid uh, lactic acid lactic acid will be producing 
So, the different type of organic compounds is producing from the anaerobic respirations, but from aerobic respirations, simply carbon dioxide and water is producing. So, as the environmental oxygen is required for fully oxidizations of the glucose, it has four different steps and that is very very important to understand that in aerobic respiration there are four steps and the steps are glycolysis the steps are acetyl CoA formation number three is very very important which is Krebs cycle and number four is electron transport system or electron transport chain so these sequential four steps is required for the aerobic respiration it's going on so we can say the steps like that is uh, four steps and these steps understanding of these steps is very very important so this is number one is glycolysis number two is acetyl acetyl coa some students may ask what is coa coa is coenzyme so this coenzyme definitely this is a part of study of the biochemistry and it's about um, you know there is a long discussion on biochemistry because if you see if, uh, the HSC level botany in HSC botany or, or A level biology there is a chapter like cell chemistry and in this cell chemistry carbohydrates lipids proteins enzymes were discussed so on that part it was explained what is coenzyme and then what is enzyme i will definitely explain a little bit about it but you know the steps name that glycolysis is the first step of aerobic respiration and also the first step of anaerobic respiration so glycolysis is the common step our first step of both uh, respiration in aerobic and anaerobic. So acetyl CoA formation is the second. Is the second. In some books or in some cases, this is not discussed uh, in a different steps. There are said like three steps: glycolysis, Krebs cycle, and electron transport chain. But this is also a steps that should be discussed because there are some changes happens here. In number three, this is Krebs, Krebs cycle, and this is a very, very uh, important Krebs cycle. Sir Hans Krebs invented this cycle, and through this process, large amount of ATP is producing here. And the last step of uh, aerobic respiration is electron transport system. By this system all the materials that is not ATP actually they will be formed as ATP and so that after the electron transport chain or system in total 38 ATP will be producing and here in aerobic respiration there are two steps number one number one same as you know this is glycolysis and number two is the formation of lactic acid or ethanol so this is the number two states that formation formation of lactic acid this is lactic acid not Los Angeles and uh, ethanol ethanol so this is the second state I mean last step of anaerobic respiration so very primarily I am discussing and I'm explaining what's going on and there are number of things should be explained in this 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 case so every single steps is important every single steps so when you understand this thing i hope in next video i mean next tutorial i shall upload and i shall discuss about these four steps and i will show you how this 38 atp will be producing or even you can see your book you not need to see all the videos even if you are confident enough to to understand things when reading your book that is okay but if you don't then please do understand when you read your books and then try to think so that that would be so much I mean that is the purpose of education so that it increase your ability to thinking so here some sort of primary lecture about respirations in next tutorial I'm coming with the more explanation of 
aerobic and anaerobic respirations. Take care.